This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Who is not me? I'm Leon, and I will open today's episode, but I got Hecky with me as always. Yeah, welcome everybody. We're just trying to confuse everybody out there. <laughs> hey there, good to uh, see you. Not but to, to to have you in our ears. No, vice versa. Whatever. <laughs> hey, have you back on the radios? <laughs> yeah, finally. Um, yeah, welcome to this episode. It's twenty nine. We're approaching Mordicon Europe twenty twenty one week, yeah. but we have other good stuff on the table, and so we we let's uh, we, we want to push through it. Real quick, um, we have a, a good interview with my friend Matisse Sachmeister. Yeah, excited. Yeah, and before we go there, like always, we have a ton of other things to talk about, and we start with Mordic 4. Mordic 4. Mordic 4 has been finally out, and there's a blog post about it about Mordic 4 standing tall, what Mordic is now capable to do, <laughs> and maybe what's not, and the uh, Mordic, like version 4.0.2 is around the corner hopefully mm -hmm. maybe when this episode airs it will be there already yeah yeah it, it should be it should be um and modic 4 is obviously a big thing we've been waiting for it well a bit i mean oh, it's, quite a while. it's not like like hugely delayed but but we're happy it's here now and then props to everybody who was involved in this effort um Uh, yeah, we have that back blog post that you already mentioned. We also have yeah. a lot of third-party um, material on it, and I'd like to yeah, just m stick with with our, our uh, superstar <laughs> documenter, co-host <laughs> of the show. <laughs> co -host, not, It, not yet, but, <laughs> uh, but, but um, video jockey uh, Joey, of course, yeah. is who we are talking about, um, and he has a, I think. A uh, good compilation of the most important features. It's called 12 New Features and Three Hidden Gems. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. And uh, he's covering those things like the marketplace beta that's in, in Mordic 4, mm -hmm. the new improved report options, and a lot of small and big things. Uh, and, and gets them almost all, ex oh. except, of course, for our beloved Tag Manager. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, additional videos from him, from him are. Uh, how to install Mordic 4, uh, how to update from 3 to 4, etc. Um, so that, that's uh, good stuff. If you need more, uh, just hit Google and you'll find more. Yeah, surely. And there's also, with coming with Mordic 4 finally finalized, the new email builder and as well the new landing page builder based on Grapes.js. And yeah, there's also, <laughs> as always, a blog post about it explaining what it's capable of, uh, what new feature it brings. And um, yeah, I think we, we talked about it a lot already because it was uh, available for Mordic 3 as an add on. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> this is now the main editor. Yeah. It has also changed a little bit under the hood anyway, uh, which actually gave us uh, ugly errors with Mordic oh, yeah. 3. There, there's um, been some troubles. Yeah, the, the most important ones should now be fixed with 401 and uh, 402, may, maybe even more. But you had this. If you have this errors inside your template, template will not be saved. Oh yeah, it's, oh. That's, that's <laughs> fun, and uh, that's gone. Okay, uh, there are still limitations, especially if you're trying to create a, an MGML template and just just drop that into Mordic and uh, magically it does not work as expected. <laughs> that's because there there are some uh, things that that are uh, not implemented fully on the Grapeshares side, or at least the way we are using Grapeshares. And um, yeah, we, we're trying our best to at least document those things to, so that you can avoid them at the time you're coding your MGML. Uh, other than that, uh, it still supports HTML, so you can still do that, but yeah. MGML is, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the way you, to go. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll be even more complete in the future and, and uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, and then, then it's a really powerful thing. Yeah, talking about powerful things, we now have a two-factor authentication uh, for Mordic using the Google Authenticator. Um, yeah, when you're using like a second authentication method, your Mordic instance gets 
a lot more secure, but we in-house at Leuchtfeld don't actually use it because we're using Auth0. Auth0, yeah, that's true. But but for many other, I think we're all used to uh, pages now that have two-factor authentication, like yeah. like send an SMS or open this or that application or open the Google Authenticator, like in this case. And so, we yeah, Mordic is now doing strong authentication, which is good. Um, there's a lot more stuff. One other that we picked was um, the Mautic infos in Gmail thing that has been around for quite a while, but yeah. kind of uh, outdated. And then uh, Don Bauman uh, took the initiative to revive this thing and bring it back to life. So the purpose here is to um, stay inside Gmail, but have some some additional information mm -hmm. in in your email thread which tells you about what we know in Mautic about that person that you're conversing with so yeah, pretty that's cool. cool and for us we are Gmail users so we're happy this is at, uh, still at, at proof of concept level but, yeah, but uh, I think they're the already way. close so so take a look yeah pretty cool and um, once again <laughs> we have something from uh, Joey because there's been a lot of questions in the forum and like on Slack popping up time and time again, um, the differentiation between transactional emails and marketing emails, and like which do exactly what. And he did a video about it and covered it, uh, explaining the differences. Yeah, uh, I would say if you're not 100% sure about the differences, but only 99%, uh, then, or 95, <laughs> then it's uh, probably worth uh, taking a look and then... Uh, uh, get digest, the last five percent covered. Digesting <laughs> those uh, three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then um, uh, another thing that that people should be aware of, and, and that comes up in the forums time and again, um, is how do we reduce the performance impact or or the the, the capacity impact of the cron jobs, specifically the campaign cron jobs. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so. If you're not familiar with, with the concept directly, the thing is that, that Mordic runs um, through all segment or through all contacts and through all campaigns, etc. Periodic periodically, in some cases, uh, rarely, uh, infrequently, like 15 minutes, sometimes every five minutes. And there are situations where you want an update even faster, specifically if you want to uh, react uh, on on what is going in in, uh, in a website session so users in the website you visit some pages and you want to uh, adjust uh, their segments on that basis yeah. and for instance give him a focus item on that basis then you don't want to wait for 10 minutes because the users probably <laughs> don't <laughs> probably yeah so what you want to do is not run all the campaigns every uh, every single minute but uh, just increase the frequency for this th single com single campaign yeah. um, by just adding an extra uh, parameter to th the cron job yeah, we put that in the show notes. No. The, the the keyword here is a uh, campaign hyphen ID <laughs> <laughs> as parameter for the campaign trigger crunch up. Yeah. Oh, what else? We have so many uh, small things. Uh, so let's let's go through them even further. One thing, uh, or most are now about feature requests. Mm -hmm. Um, we see a lot lately, and yeah. that's good. Pretty good. And uh, we, we've also seen a blog post uh, by Ruth, who's explaining how uh, a feature wish might turn into reality. Mm -hmm. There are other ways of, as well, of course, but but the way of um, a feature uh, wish getting recognized by the product team and, and uh, picked up and, and realized by the actual product team, development team, uh, that's described in the blog post uh called uh how do ideas become features in Mordic. So it gives a bit of insight like behind what happens, like behind the curtain. Uh-huh. But yeah. And um yeah and, and also it helps people to to uh formulate the, the correctly and, and, and maybe support the, the reality. Yeah. Um yeah look at this or uh, look at it. <laughs> the link is in the show notes like you are used to find things. So what else do we have? Which uh, one one good example for feature request, and that is the integration of 
cal.com, which is an open source alternative to things like Calendly. Mm -hmm. So allowing people to book your or book, book uh, or schedule appointments with you yep. through your Google Calendar. Uh, so cal.com, uh, formerly known as Calenso, um, with as a Mordic integration, fantastic idea. I, oh, I would love to have that for myself yeah. or for a company. <laughs> Next up would be image management, like like uh, organized images in, in um, folders, etc. Searching all that. Um, yeah, but, uh, really yeah. needed feature yeah all, all those all those links all the things also in the show notes and please if you sound if you think that sounds attractive to you go there yeah. hit the vote button yeah uh, another feature I wish that we came across was to extend the scoring actions because currently it does not cover adding text or changing segments and somebody kind of wanted and needed that because maybe there are currently like some workarounds using campaigns and stuff but it would be much easier to just have that directly as a scoring action so. absolutely yeah oh yeah yeah that's a tricky thing by the way to uh, come up with a clear strategy on how to use the points in scoring yeah. uh, if you do a mix of everything across the place and you're pretty quickly <laughs> losing sight of things uh, okay and then a last one a really different type of, of a feature request is uh, the idea to add modding info into like advertising platform stats mm -hmm. um, with a really nice um, uh, mock-up set aside and the point here is that that the person is not only wishing the, this uh, feature but but uh, actually wanting to implement it oh, cool. but is looking for help so that here's some chrome extension developer wanted yeah if you want to be part of this or if your company might be interested in having that and then helping out then take a look at this uh forum uh, feature request called add modic into add platform stats <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so, lots of feature wishes. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we need to take a little break here and we move on to the pre recorded interview with Matisse. And here we go. Okay, here we go. I'm uh, welcoming today Matisse Sagmeister. Hello, Matisse. Is that Hello. the right, pro right pronunciation? <laughs> Uh, yes, it's the right uh, pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, welcome to the show. Uh, you are located in Slovenia, as far as I know, and uh, that, at least for me, means Ljubljana, <laughs> or maybe uh, the coast. No. Uh, uh, I, I am located in Slovenia, but uh, I'm, I'm not located in Ljubljana. Ljubljana uh, is our capital city. Yeah. I'm located in uh, about uh, 40 kilometers away. Uh, 34, wow. 40 God. kilometers away God. Good in a uh, city called um, Logatets. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, I work from home um, okay, cool. most of the time, yeah. or actually all the time now that we have COVID and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nonetheless, it's a lovely country for everybody who's not been to Slovenia. It's always worth going there. Yes, yes, uh, I can, I can confirm that. Uh, I uh, please come visit. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful country. Uh, many people, many people enjoy the the uh, the nature, the nature here. Um, we have a bit of um, mountains. We have uh, we have a bit of sea. So. Yeah. It's a it's a bit for uh, it's something for everybody. <laughs> yeah, even famous skiers and so on. Okay, tell me a little bit about yourself. I I, I know you are self-employed, but but how much of that is Mordic today? And and what else do you do for a living? Uh, yeah, so uh, that's correct. I'm self-employed. I uh, I'm a contractor for uh, some clients, um, <clears throat> some companies, uh, and. Um, I would say today about uh, half of the work I do is based around Mautic. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I am uh, a, de uh, a web developer, primarily working on backend systems, and I also do some uh, sy uh, system integrations and stuff like that. So, uh, hmm. yeah, uh, <laughs> pretty pretty widespread. <laughs> okay, but but how, how did you 
get there? What's your education and what, what roles did you have previously? Uh, so, so my professional journey started uh, in 2015 uh, when uh, I got educated as a computer technician. Mm -hmm. uh, I started working as a, a junior developer. Uh, I worked on WooCommerce solutions uh, as well as uh, some employee management system, uh, insurance platform. I'm also working on this uh, today um, mm -hmm. and in the present and uh, some smaller uh, some smaller gigs uh, projects um, in the middle uh, eventually in 2050, 2020 I started working with um, Mautic yeah yeah well good to have you <laughs> let's <laughs> let's talk about this project or this is topic of the interview which uh, for me a starting point was was a forum post in the Mordic forums by uh, uh, our friend Paul McCann in the UK who had his post titled tracking offline sales uh, with a loyalty card for a restaurant and that's where you uh, jumped on and said, and said well yeah I have done something similar here and uh, gave some extra information. So uh, can you tell us what, what client or at least what industry this was all about? So in case? Um, the client we are working for um, is in the uh, tourism industry. Uh -huh. um, and it's actually one of the biggest uh, spa centers in Slovenia. Um, and that's uh, where we got the, uh, the our first client mm -hmm. uh, that we uh, Worked on Mautic with so yeah. Uh, yeah. When, when you say we, that is the I the, I mean when I say we I mean uh, I mean uh, myself and um, uh, company for which I'm a contractor, Software Octopus Solutions. Yeah. Uh, we also provide uh, in addition to Mautic, we also provide uh, some other. Uh, platforms mainly for uh, event uh, event management mm -hmm. so but yeah in like I said in 2020 uh, we we started working on uh, Mautic mm -hmm. so okay and, and uh, let's not look at Mautic for the for the moment but uh, at your client uh, in, in tourism what were their initial goals or, or what would are, are they trying to accomplish with this thing as a loyalty program so uh, they they try to they try to uh, replace the obsolete loyalty system they they uh, had before mautic mm -hmm. with uh, with the features that mautic offers they they tried to uh, they they try to get a better sense of what the customer wants uh, and uh, based on that, uh, provide personalized offers uh, on on a contact basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so they learn from sort of interaction by the end customer, any sort of signals, um, and then they yeah, turn this into sort of marketing offerings or whatever. Customer. Yeah. So so the the end. So Mautic connects uh, the uh, a couple of websites they have, as well as as uh, as a user profile, uh, which is also part of their uh, web resources, mm -hmm. and uh, they they can register there. Uh, so the users can register there, uh, and um, based on forums they fill out and the the purchases they made actually uh, when when they come to the spa center, mm -hmm. contact get specific points, and uh, based on that points, they move to 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 a specific to a specific level, and based on that, on which level they are, at some point they get they get uh, special offers and. Oh yeah, yeah yeah okay get the point okay cool so they did not have Mautic uh, before and uh, then then you. Or, or your the contact the the company you're contacting with they, somebody came up with the idea to use Mordic for this thing. Uh, so no, uh, the the spa center didn't have Mautic before, uh -huh. and we we came up uh, so uh, the company that I work for came up with the 
uh, the idea got the idea from the meetup. Uh, they they were uh, it was not actually a Maltic uh, meetup per se, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, there was uh, there was uh, one person speaking uh, presenting presenting Maltic uh, okay, yeah. in Slovenia. So. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So uh, tell us a little bit about the general architecture. When there's Maltic in the middle, it, it obviously has to connect to external systems, etc. So what what external systems are involved, and in how are they connected to Maltic? Uh, okay, so uh, like I started before. Uh, there are uh, so the company has a couple of web pages where they they advertise their services and products and uh, mm -hmm. whatnot. Yeah. And then you also have data warehouse system where every which is basically a backend system and holds all the information informations about the, the clients. Mm -hmm. And this data warehouse system connects with all the in other internal system they, oh. they have within the company. Okay. And the Mautic, uh, the Mautic is uh, actually serves uh, perfectly as a glue uh, between between all those systems. We are uh, uh, and that, that that's possible because uh, because of uh, custom API endpoints that we introduced in our in our plugin. Uh, as well as some uh, other mechanisms which are provided by Mautic. Mm -hmm. They're called events. I don't know if it's too technical or not. Can, can you name the, the product that you're using for data warehouse that you're connecting or is it uh, understood? Uh, I, I, I'm actually not aware of it, uh, so I can't, I can't tell you. Yeah. Um, but I think the the solution is uh, is based in uh, C, C sharp, I think. Ah, no worries. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, uh, what what else are the the main components that are using for the the logics of the loyalty program? program? Okay. Like, so like we we use things. quite a lot. Yes, uh, we use quite a lot uh, of um, core. Um, of core components uh, like uh, contacts, so every every user uh, of this spa center, every customer of this uh, cast, uh, spa center is actually a contact in Nautic. Mm -hmm. uh, then we we use we use uh, campaigns, uh, we use uh, channels for specific uh, heavily we heavily use email. Uh, emails from uh, yep. channels yep. and uh, points, of course. Uh, then segments; uh, those are the core components that, that already exist in Maltic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's basically uh, the those are the the core components we we use. And um, yeah. Okay. And uh, did you have to uh, did you have to add any extra layers? Like some have to reflect. Say products or purchases, etc. Uh, e yes, we uh, we we have uh, introduced some custom components uh, into into the Mautic. It was really nicely done. Um, uh, Mautic does uh, does a lot of uh, heavy lifting for us on mm -hmm. in that regard, which is great. So. Uh, we uh, w examples of such of such components are products, uh, hmm. transactions, uh, and uh, family cars, uh, cards. Hmm. So uh, yeah, those those are the, the 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 main ones. The main ones that are really required. Hmm. There are also levels, but as as I will mention this uh, later later on, uh, uh, we. M might be able to use um, stages actually instead oh, of levels. Okay, cool. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, as far as as far as um, uh, modified uh, core goes, there there are some modifications, but uh, mostly are not. They are not big, um, so we we modified uh, some some templates. We make Mautic reflect the branding of the the, the company, uh, which which was really again it was it, it 
it was really elegantly done by replacing uh, the templates. All the mechanisms necessary for that are already included in the core. Mm -hmm. uh, one bigger modification of the of the core so far was, and we actually made a pull request uh, to the official Mautic repository, mm -hmm. was um, the categories on segments. So oh, my cool. my colleague uh, Benjamin, uh, which uh, who is no longer with us, uh, had uh, submitted this uh, to the okay to the Mautic core. Very cool, very cool. And and then probably you also had to add some custom actions for uh, I don't know forms or campaign actions or segments or whatever, right? Uh, we added some um, some. Uh, some custom uh, some custom actions on on points oh, oh yeah of course yeah you're using points yeah, yeah. and um, the the transition the transition between the levels we use in Mautic mm -hmm. is done by by uh, triggers so uh, mm -hmm. it's really that's again something that already exists in Mautic, exists yeah. in Mautic and we were able to to use it uh, with Little effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, cool. Um, so all in all, you, you're using Mautic in the core. You're connecting other systems to get data out of them. Obviously, you you hook Mautic into several websites, and then you extend the the well the structure and the logic uh, within Mautic to to enable those things that you. That, that that make make the business and that that your client needs. Uh, what would you tell others who do similar th things? I mean, in some in some regards, this sounds like like an e-commerce integration where you have some of those needs, and uh, in in other areas, it, it might be even things on top of it. Um, is there any any tip you can give to others, or or what do you think we should, some of these things could or should be generic features going forward? So what what I would uh, suggest really um, uh, others that are thinking of maybe starting anything with Mautic is uh, to get to know Mautic uh, for a bit uh, mm -hmm. from the user perspective um, uh, because this will uh, this will allow you to to really uh, get get the value out of those. Uh, more uh, advanced or hidden uh, features. For example, a good example of this uh, with us is actually, like I mentioned, uh, we have Im implemented the levels mm. in, in, Ma in Mautic and we could uh, get away with just using the segments. But at the time, this, this is the first, um, Practically the first, uh, the first uh, Mautic project uh, for for us, uh, and um, at the time we we were learning and uh, and we implemented the level. So mm. uh, despite of it not being really necessary, yeah. since we have already stages. So I, I would say I would say this: get to know, get to know about Mautic for a bit, uh, click around, play with it uh, um, before before you actually say, okay, I need I need uh, a custom a custom developer to uh, a custom feature to, mm. to achieve that. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. I've seen this so many times that people try to develop some things that is basically already there or that can be achieved by a much more elegant, elegant way. So maybe another option would be to just ask somebody get some some uh, some experience on board for a, a day or so and uh, yes, yes. save that's save. that's a great idea following that lead i would actually uh, like to point out that um, uh, forum and uh, slack as well as some uh, videos mm -hmm. um, we we uh, we have on on youtube uh, that there are people that are making videos on youtube uh, uh, in in uh, the, for for easier onboarding, so I I would really suggest uh, people look into that mm. uh, because uh, it might really really help them. 
Yeah. Um, but of course, the the I think the 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 best uh, the best uh, teacher is experience. As the more yeah. you use Mautic, the more uh, the more smooth everything yeah. gets. And I agree, and and I have to say, I have a lot of respect for you, for you doing this this um, pretty complex project <laughs> uh, um, with with not too much of this experience, and and with with really fascinating results. So. Yeah, perhaps. yeah. I mean, I when when I started, there there are a lot of uh, uh, there, there are a lot of things that uh, seemed uh, a lot a lot more challenge uh, a lot more challenging uh, than uh, that they actually were in reality. So, hmm. um, but now these days, um, of course, that there are some issues. There there are there are uh, things that uh, I still need to to check or look or to spend time on on uh, investigating before I can go go ahead and develop the feature. Uh, but uh, it's less and less. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, that's cool. The, you, you, of course, you did this on Modic 3, right? Uh, yes, we actually started with, um, with uh, Mautic 2. And mm -hmm. then when Mautic 3 came, uh, came out, I believe Mautic 3.1 was out when we uh, when we migrated mm -hmm. uh, from two to three, and now we are waiting for the right time uh, from a client's perspective to migrate from three to four. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, and given that you also have had insights in in other web projects from WordPress to what have you. Uh, what is your overall impression of Mordic after this project, like, like uh, the code quality and, and, and uh, product quality, etc.? Uh, the, the, the code quality of, of Mautic uh, code base, I think, comparing to the projects from the past, is, is really great. Um, and uh, it's more about uh, gaining, gaining some, some experience uh, and actually doing the the development that will uh, that will greatly help you uh, speed up oh, okay. The, okay. the process. But the, the code quality itself is 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 great, and uh, at least at least from what from what I see uh, from other projects and uh, uh, code quality as well as uh, I like the I like the idea that you are pushing uh, tests, automated tests uh, in the Mautic core. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. Mm, okay. Um, well, you already mentioned that you found the forums and the Slack to be useful for you, and, and um, it's it's pretty obvious that you've been active lately in in both areas. And then for those who don't remember, Slack is always for temporary temporary information, like like. A, what's going on tomorrow or, or whatever and all things support or tips or ideas etc should always go to the forums that's why, why we are having two channels here so given that you've only joined Mordic or the Mordic community in 2020 um, how did that start go for you did you have trouble finding the right spots and understanding why there's two channels or, and then plus Facebook etc uh, how did that go for you I actually I, I knew that uh, Slack uh, and uh, Forum uh, basically existed from the from the very beginning, mm -hmm. but I, I started I started with uh, with reading the the uh, developer documentation and um, uh, at the beginning there is um, there was a lot of uh, looking into the source code of existing plugins. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that that really helped me. And later on, uh, when, as I as I gained uh, uh, some experience, you know, Mautic Core was introduced uh, as a source of information, mm -hmm. uh, a, a really good one, um, I must say, uh, because again the the code quality is uh, great and the code is readable. And uh, later, later on, of course, uh, Slack and uh, Forum. I, I needed a little bit of push from uh, from my company uh, yeah. that I work for. But yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I know it's it's always a journey from from um, 
reading or being a read-only uh, participant uh, to really asking questions if you have one or even to answer to other people's questions and, and that's good to see that you are at that point today and uh, appreciate it and uh, so thank you very much from from on behalf of the entire community yeah it's, uh, it's, it's my pleasure yeah. are, are there any other modic activities or, or projects of yours that you would like to mention at this point so uh, i i have i have a one i have one one plugin that uh might that is actually free and open source uh, that might be useful for someone else the plugin is about integrating the um, mail gun service mm -hmm. and the um, the Mautic. so uh, so we are sending our emails from Mautic via mail gun mm -hmm. and one day the request came Uh, that uh, we would like to we would like to send uh, email from 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 more than just one domain right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's that's why I I forked uh, one of the existing mailgun uh, uh, plugins yeah. and uh, extended extended the functionality in a way so configuration for Mailgun for multiple domains yeah. on a single Mautic instance. I've, I've heard that request a couple of times or, or read the request and I think some people may be really happy about it. Cool. Okay. Then um, last but not least, where can people find you online? Are you on, I know you're on GitHub, right? So I, I have I have a GitHub, but uh, the the overview of uh, the overview of my skills in 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 English, which which I think is the the most uh, useful for yeah. for the the audience, mm. uh, is on LinkedIn. I think uh, okay. you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you're welcome to to <laughs> to get in touch. Uh, get in touch with me ask okay. a question if you need yeah yeah cool we will have the url in the show notes of course and uh yeah once again i would like to thank you not only for this interview but also for being an active part of the uh modi community um of, for contributing and i'm lo looking forward to yeah may maybe meet you in person at the next sprint or something And um, um, yeah, as a par part of some some modic team, being really active. Yay. Uh, yeah, yeah, would love would love to meet in person for sure. Yeah, uh, if a, if the opportunity presents itself, uh, I'm sure we will, will definitely chat about okay, uh, yeah. Mautic, I think. Uh, yeah, let's do that, Matisse. Thank you, th thank you so much for today. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, thanks for the insights. And well, I talk to you soon. Thank you for having me and uh, have a great day. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, that was pretty interesting seeing like the, the entry and first baby steps into Mordic. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I would call it baby steps, <laughs> but <laughs> like the smaller steps and going further into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The onboarding is such an important part. And, and, yeah, um, onboarding was the word I was missing. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, no, but but, but uh, Mordic, we, we are at a point where we need way more developers that are willing to contribute yeah. and are, that are starting the journey to to contribution etc and um, i think we also have ideas on how to support that better etc so yeah good to hear all that and by the way of course we, uh, not only modic will need yeah. more developers uh it's at Leuchtfeuer we have the same thing time and again uh finding develop modic developers for ourselves yeah. is is a big deal a big issue uh, also neither local nor remote nor um, um fixed or free or whatever it, yeah. it's a uh, hard finding hard it. times yeah well okay so what else do we have community so, part yeah community part um I think there's been another blog post. I think it's the third time or something I mentioned a blog post. Um, the quarterly community roundup written by Ruth has been published for the third quarter of 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I won't even take away that much. Yeah, but good reading. Yeah. It's yeah. good reading, yeah. but just if you were interested, read it for yourselves because explaining that is kind of nonsense. Um, there's been <laughs> <laughs> and there's another one. Um, there's currently a poll going on in the uh, forums. 
about using gated videos on landing pages because currently with the grapes js builder it is not directly possible to do that and it doesn't seem easy to even implement that feature mm. so there's a poll going on whether we want as a community to fund a developer um, to introduce uh, to like develop that feature and introduce it to the grapes.js builder and whether that feature is even wanted or needed mm. because if nobody wants or uh, needs that feature why would we spend money on it hmm. yeah, so yeah. That's, that's what the poll is going on yeah, I, I do think we should have it but but uh, reality check is, is always an inter interesting thing I want to come back though to the community roundup which you said uh, explaining or reading out loud is, is nonsense yeah it's it's a ton of, of content there yeah. but I w would like to uh, pick one uh, thing there and mm -hmm. say uh, shout out to the meetup group at Ghent, Belgium, mm -hmm. uh, because that's good that we have a, a new thing growing there and uh, we will see things, more things in the future. It's uh, back, on, back on the list already. Um, but uh, Belgium is, of course, also the place where uh, Mordic Conference Europe is going to happen yeah. real soon. And by the way, we are also now in the process of uh, refreshing the mordic.org slash events page yeah. where you can find uh, the regular meetups but also the one-time uh, events uh, on nine... Uh, on the current in the, in the current state, uh, state from now on. Oh, that's <laughs> pretty handy. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Morticon Europe, um, we're crazy excited now. Yeah, it? it's really <laughs> so much planning going into it already. Uh, so you are going. I'm going. There are two more coming from from Leuchtfeuer and a um, good number of people from other places as well, including yeah. the US and the Middle East. Although this is, uh, of course, Morty Conference Europe, we have speakers from other places as well. Ticket sales is open. We only have a limited number of tickets available um, due to, you know, uh, the circumstances. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't miss that one. Uh, Community Day it will be day two of the conference. So, this, so the actual tracks are happening in, on Monday. Uh -huh. they, um, the Tuesday is reserved for community well, contribution. So we do spr a team sprints in, in the developer, developer product team and education, uh, marketing and the community team. There's a whole list of things that we want to push forward. And sure. a yeah. real life event is of course... A good opportunity to get get way more done than than yeah. typically happens in in, in the online and asynchronous or synchronous collaboration. Their in person are super productive. Yeah, like. well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, I can hardly remember how that feels. <laughs> I remember like back into nineteen in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Yeah. Um, so, in other words, when we get back here with the Mordecast, that will be the the show after the the Mortic conference and yep. the, so that will obviously be our main topic of the show surely <laughs> and um yeah I'm, I'm, i can't wait to find out what what the content will be because there's a lot of things um scheduled for those two or three days yeah <laughs> and let's see what reality brings i can't wait good so that's it um Back to reality. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is ending this episode of the Mordecast. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you for listening. I want to encourage you to give us all the feedback that you have. Also, if you have content that you would like to have uh, mentioned on the Mordecast, get it to us and we'll be happy to talk about it. Sure. Tell the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Leon, any final famous last words? Nope. Nope. I'm done. Okay, <laughs> then I'm done as well. Perfect. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> listen to you. No, talk to you soon. <laughs> talk to you soon. Listen to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye.